In section 1.6, which is uh, entitled, What are the Chances? We'll be talking about probability or chance that an event will occur or that a situation exists. And in this section, it's very important to remember that you can change a percentage to a decimal and a decimal to a percentage by moving the decimal place over. We've done it a few times, and we're actually going to do it a lot in this lecture here. All right, so according to the U.S. Census Bureau, about 51.5% of adults are women. What would you say the probability that the next adult you run into is female? So we don't want a percentage. A probability is a number between 0 and 1. 0 meaning no probability absolutely will not happen. One meaning 100% definitely will happen. Or it could be possible, a desired outcome over all possible outcomes. One in two chances. So in other words, we want to change 51.5% into a decimal that's between 0 and 1 or into a fraction, but this this is uh, better to go to a decimal. So we move the decimal over 2 and drop the percent sign. So the probability is 0.515 that you will meet a female. We've changed a percent into a probability. You can actually have the zero in front if you want. <clears throat> All right, so if 51.5% are females, well then 100 minus 51.5, that's going to be the number of males. 100 minus 51.5 is 48.5. So the probability of meeting a female is 0 0.515. And then let's change 48.5% into a decimal. We move the decimal place over 2 and drop the percent sign, 485% that the next person you bump into will be a male. All right, now, question number two. There are 535 members of the Congress. Based on question one, how many would you expect to be female? <clears throat> so what is 51.5% of 535. We've done this kind of problem a lot. 0.515, change that to a decimal. Of means multiply, 535. You would expect there to be 276 women. The probability is that there are 276 women in Congress. Now, in reality, there are 104 women in Congress. All right, so that's a lot lower than 276. What do you think that statistic says about politics? Well, this is an opinion question, <clears throat> but we could definitely say something like the number of women is underrepresented compared to the general population. If there are only 104 women and in the general population of, of just, in general, any 535 people, 276 of them would be women, <clears throat> we would say that 104 is definitely a low. Moving on to number four. On one game show, contestants get to roll the dice one time, and if they roll a number greater than four, they win an all-expense-pay trip to Bora Bora. What is the probability of winning? All right, so if they roll a 1, no, they don't win. If they roll a 2, no, they don't win. If they roll a 3, no, they don't win. If they roll a 4, no, they don't win because it has to be greater than 4. If they roll a 5, yep, they win the trip. And if they roll a 6, yes, they win their trip. So the desired outcome would be to win the trip or roll greater than a 5. There are only two 
situations that are that desirable outcome of the one, two, three, four, five, six possible numbers you could roll. Only two of them are the desired outcome of greater than four. So there's a two and six chance, or we could reduce that to one in three. So the probability is one in three. Here we're representing the probability as a fraction. If you wanted to, you could change that to a percent, uh, a decimal between zero and one. But here the fraction kind of, you know, seems to represent the problem a little better. How about number five? In one math class, there are 30 students, 12 of whom are non-traditional in terms of age. If you randomly pick one person from that class, what is the probability they will be of non-traditional age? So, of all the students in the class, the desired outcome would be that they would be of non-traditional age, and we know there are 12 of them. So the probability is 12 in 30, or we could reduce that. Six goes into both those numbers, so we could say two in five. Our probability is two in five students is of non-traditional age. Or if you were to put that in your calculator, two divided by five, the decimal between zero and one would be 0.4. Probability of 0.4 or two in five. Let's look at number six. An online simulation helps students understand their chances of passing a course based on study habits, attitude, attendance, work hours, sleep hours, and amount of homework. So here's this one student running this simulation 10 times. And these were the results from the 10 times they ran the simulation, probably changing the number of hours they worked or the amount of homework they completed, 10 different simulations. Based on these results, discuss how likely you think it is the student will pass. All right, so of the 10, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The desired outcome would be to pass the class, and there were 10 simulations. So we would say... The chance of pass, the probability of passing is 7 in 10, or 0.7. So that's like a 70% chance of passing, which I don't think is really that high. You would maybe want 80 or 90%. You want to, to be more definite that you're going to pass. But given this data, that's what this shows. And then what do you think your probability is that you'll pass? Hopefully, I mean, this is an opinion question, but hopefully you have higher than 70% possibility of passing, you know, by doing your homework and coming to class and the other factors that they've talked about in this problem.